and welcome to this tutorial on rigging and posing in MPFB. My name is Joel Palmius and I am the project manager for the MakeHuman community. In this video I will cover the basic steps of rigging and posing in MPFB. The main audience is people who are not previously familiar with rigging and posing. Seasoned animators might find some sections superfluous but will probably still benefit from the hints on rig types and saving and loading poses. In the following, I will demonstrate how to add a rig to your character and explain the differences between the various rig options. Then we will take a look at posing, both before and after having added rig helpers. We will end by demonstrating how to save and load poses, including how to load predefined and downloadable MakeHuman BVH style poses. The topic of rigging and posing is rather large. Thus, this first video will not cover advanced topics. Specifically, Rigify and Mixamo will have to wait until a later video. But let's take a look at how we can add a rig to a character. First we create a human. We go to the New Human panel and the From Scratch sub panel. Here we will ignore the options. You can always modify these later, so there is no problem with adding a rig early in the process. With the human selected, we can now close the New Human panel. Instead, we open the Rigging panel and the Add Rig sub-panel. We will get back to the options here, but for now we will simply go for the default settings. So we click Add Standard Rig. As you can see, we got lines in our character. This is the rig, conceptually a skeleton consisting of bones. The bones can be manipulated in order to move the limbs of the body. To be able to pose the character, you enter Pose mode in the drop-down. The rig can now be manipulated. So we select a single bone and click R to rotate it. So what we did here was to add the default rig to the character. This is a good option if you have no specific needs. It has enough bones to get control, but it is still not very complex. Unless we do something more, the posing will be done in a mode which is usually called FK, Forward Kinematics. This means that the bones are rotated individually, and all child bones will follow. This is usually straightforward and easy to understand. However, while the upside is you have full control over each bone, this is also the downside. To achieve what you want, you will have to manually control each bone. We will get back to the alternatives in a bit. But let's first take a look at the different rig options. Here you can see the base types of the various rigs. There are subtypes of some of these, but we will ignore those for now. The leftmost rig is what we just saw. You can see that it has detailed hand bones. It also has bones for controlling the face. In this variation, it has detailed control over toes. The three in the middle do not have facial bones and have variations on how bones are arranged. Particularly, the hand areas look different. Then you have the nuclear option, Rigify. This rig has lots and lots of bones. It provides lots of good stuff, but may also take some getting used to. We will cover Rigify in a later video. Now, when should you use which? Out of the standard rigs, chances are you will use default if you intend to work in Blender, or Game Engine if you intend to export your character to, for example, Unity. If you have very specific needs related to animation, you could go for CMU MB or Mixamo, but most users will not need to bother with these. If you want to use the pose asset packs, your only option is the default rig. We will take a look at these later. Another upside of the default rig is the availability of rig helpers. Let's take a look at these. We will start over with a new character. We add a default rig as before. Now before continuing, I'll just quickly add eyes since we'll look at these later.
Now, instead of posing using the FK method, we instead go to the Rig Helpers subpanel. Let's accept the default settings and click Add Helpers. It might take a second or two, but then you can see that the rig changed. Let's enter pose mode and see what happened. We can now select a hand. Then we click G and move it rather than rotating. You can see that the arm adapts naturally. This is the other major animation mode called IK, Inverse Kinematics. This means that you move a control bone and Blender helps you calculate how the rest of the bones should rotate in order to reach the position of the control bone. The upside of this is that it is a lot easier and quicker. The downside is that you lose the precise control of the individual bones and that sometimes it ends up looking unnatural. The rig helpers for the default rig will give you some of the power that would otherwise come with Rigify while still not being overwhelming. To start with, you get IK control over arms and bones. In the default mode, the foot bones will move with the root bone, so if you move the hip, the feet will stay on the ground. In IK, you also have control bones for controlling in which direction the bending bones should aim. With the rig helpers, you also get grip control over the entire hand or individual fingers. Here I select the grip control bone. Then I click RXX. That is, I first click R to get into rotation mode. Then I click X twice to get the rotation around the bone's own X axis rather than around the world's X axis. Now when I rotate, the hand opens and closes. This can also be done for an individual finger. I select the finger control bone and click RXX in order to control it individually. For the fingers, I can also rotate freely. Here I just click R and start rotating. Finally, there is also eye control. Here you have a big bone which can be moved to control in which direction the eyes should look. You also have smaller bones to control each eye individually. Now let's return to the Rig Helpers panel. I'll remove the helpers so we can see the options again. This might look as an intimidating set of controls, but basically they all let you specify which bones should be controlled by AK and which bones should move together with which other bones. There is no right or wrong here, it comes down to what you want. For each option, there is a short explanation in a tooltip. As an example, let's demonstrate the difference in parenting. As you saw previously, the hands would move if we moved the hip. Let's say we don't want that. We set that the hands should not have a parent. We add the helpers. Enter pose mode. Select the hips. Now we move the hips. As you can see, in this way, the hands stay in place. Let's remove the helpers and instead take a look at the finger controls. Previously, we wanted the fingers to be controlled by a grip bone. The alternative is to have them behave like arms and legs and have a target instead. This is useful if you want to point at things rather than grip things. Anyway, my suggestion is to experiment with the settings and see which ones suit your needs. Now let's start over with the standard set of helpers. I'll speed things up here, since it's exactly the same operation as before. Now I'll create a basic pose. Here I'll take it slowly and not cut away any of the retries and errors I made while posing. 
since this video is aimed at beginners, I'm thinking that it is useful to show all the steps that was taken. But if you feel comfortable with posing, you can safely skip ahead a few minutes. This is the, oh no, what did I just do pose. As our characters tend to do this a lot, we want to apply it to different characters. So we go to the Create Assets panel. Here we go to the Make Pose sub-panel. We enter a name for our pose and save it. Now let's move the character out of the way. We create a new character. We add a rig, we apply the helpers. Now we can go to the rigging panel and the load pose panel. We load the post that we just created. Here we can see that our second character got posed correctly. Now the limitation of the pose saving and loading functionality is that the rig settings need to be the same. If your original character had rig helpers, then your destination character also needs to have rig helpers in order to load the pose. You can load and save poses for all rig types, but the pose can only be loaded onto a character with the same rig type. Anyway, that's the basic rigging and posing. The last thing I want to show are the downloadable poses. You can find pose asset packs among the other asset packs. For information on how to download and install asset packs, see the Getting Started video. In the following, I have downloaded and installed all the pose asset packs. Now let's create a new character and give it a default rig. Now we can load one of the downloaded poses on the character. This is quick and easy. But it should be noted that this is a separate type of pose saved in a different format than if you created the pose yourself. This type of pose, the BVH pose, will only work on a default rig without helpers. When applying it, it will also mess with the bones a bit, making further posing somewhat cumbersome. This said, it's an easy way to get predefined pose. Anyway, that concludes today's tutorial. Thank you for watching and happy modeling.